morning, day seven. And look at the view we've got this morning after moving camp. It is absolutely stunning. And we are right on top of a basin that looks down into the bottom here. And it is exactly a year ago today that I took my grizzly bear. Hopefully it'll bring us luck. The plan is today we're going to get on top of one of these knolls just out here and sit and glass and see what we can see and hopefully we'll be able to pick out a moose and all them alders on that bank side which then leaves us four days to pack it out. We're being two of us, it's going to be a mission but I'm sure we'll be able to do it. Anywho, time to get behind them binoculars and I'll catch you later. Good morning from Alaska and what a magnificent day it is this morning. Uh, beautiful bright sunshine, really warm. You know, it's incredible that this time last year we were rained in for four or five days straight and there were all fog around the mountain and we couldn't see anything, but this is a huge departure. Now, busy day moving yesterday. My thighs are pretty sore from all the carrying and lifting and we're now at home up here on this plateau. But today it's gonna to be busy. We've got plenty of glassing to do on both sides of this valley. It's actually over behind me that we were camping last year that we took our moose, Steve's grizzly bear and the two black Bear, so we know this is pretty fertile country. It's also big country, lots of work to do today. So we're just having breakfast now. Head down to a knoll, which is just over my left shoulder. Gives you a great panoramic view of the valley as it opens out beyond you. And hopefully we'll see a moose. And we've got five days left of the hunt. Ideally today, tomorrow, we need to get a moose down. It'll take us two or three days for two of us to pack it out, depending on location. The closer we get to being picked up, the more nervous we'll get and the harder it'll get. But you couldn't ask for better conditions. You couldn't ask for a better location. So fingers crossed that luck is in our favor today. With the drama of yesterday's move now behind us, we set about our next task, finding a giant moose bull. And it's not long before we have action. Three of them there. The front one's a bull. It's a long way away, I know that. It's encouraging to see so many animals so soon after arriving in camp. Here is a small family group comprising a young bull, two cows and a calf. The dark patch of water just came to the right hand side for that little meadow is. But not too far away is a much larger bull, which appears to be legal. In order to be harvest legal in this hunting unit, a bull must have antlers with at least a spread of 50 inches or have three brow tines on one side. This is where it's essential to have access to a quality spotting scope that allows you to correctly identify these characteristics. Getting this wrong has severe consequences. Well, it's a beautiful day and a wise man once said, you're never going to see any game sat in your tent. He was a liar. He was not right, because this morning Wildy has seen not one bull moose, but actually two groups. One on the far ridge over there, that's a great thing about having the tent pointing out towards that face. And then a bigger one down over our left hand shoulder here. He looks like he's in great shape. Now he's disappeared into the alders down there because this is quite warm. But we've got the choice of two bulls really. We don't know how far away he is, you think? A long way. And I think not as long, but it's definitely worth going to have a look. The great thing is about the location we're in, there is a knoll down there that we can sit on, it gives us a good panoramic view of the valley in front of us, and hopefully it'll let us look up into the alders and some of the drawers that are up there. But it's a great sign. Ideally, we could do with getting one down today or tomorrow. It gives us plenty of time to pack and back out because there's only two of us on the job. But yeah, it's very encouraging. This bull here, he was already clean, wasn't he? This guy was nearly finished, wasn't he? And now there's another one just appeared at the bottom of the ridge down here as well. There's moose everywhere. So let's just have a quick look at this one yeah. and then we'll have a drift down there and that one's right near the airstrip. Definitely. Come on, have a look at that. Soon after we moved down the valley, a cow and calf passed directly behind camp, looking inquisitively at their unexpected neighbours. Cole couldn't have picked a better spot for us to hunt. Not only does our location provide a panoramic view of the valley, but the area appears to be crawling with moose. Wildy finds a comfortable spot and relaxes into his task. With a view like this, the smart approach is to let the binoculars and spotting scope do the hard work. Once we spot a legal bull, we can plan our approach. It's a team effort and we work together to discuss and agree our strategy. It's a system that served us well in the past. He's been doing that for a while though, hasn't he? 
After a productive morning, we have the luxury of being able to head back to camp for lunch, taking the opportunity to glass the valley from a slightly different angle en route. Of course, there's still chores to do and we head down to the creek to collect water. I prefer to have a water source a little closer to camp, but it's the only minor downside and what would otherwise appear to be the perfect location. Having finished lunch, I leave Wildy scanning Moose Ridge while I check out the country behind camp. We saw a cow and a calf crossing earlier and I'm intrigued to see where they went. You never know, there may be a bull with an easy reach. But with the rolling terrain offering so many places to hide, I decide our best bet is to continue scanning the far ridge where we have the best visibility. The moss and lichen covered knoll offers a surprisingly comfortable bed and we relax into the task at hand. And our patience is rewarded as another bull emerges into the late afternoon sun. He's a little smaller than we'd like, but the signs are encouraging. But with the shadows beginning to lengthen, we decide to head back to camp and regroup in the morning. So we're coming towards the end of day seven. It's been a fantastic day, you know, beautiful bright sunshine, a little bit more wind in the air, so a little bit cooler today. We haven't got anything on the ground, but we've seen plenty of game. There's been moose everywhere, hasn't there? All the way down this valley. First thing this morning, now Steve could see all the way up and down the valley from his seat. Very early on, you saw four moose, two bulls, a cow and a calf. That's right, up there, they seem to move down as well. When we moved position and came further down the valley, we've seen moose down here as well, haven't we? Yeah, so just on this little patch here, we've seen some big paddles right at the top of the hill. A couple of decent sized bulls, a little bit further down but they've been moving in and out of cover all day so we know we're there we've just got to be a little bit patient and be there at the right place at the right time yeah we've got to sort it out a little bit haven't we it's like you pushed further up the valley and i've gone this way and then we've both met up and gone back down here again but like you say they are moving they're in and out of the alders you see them one minute and then they're gone the next and it's hard to make a game plan they're not really settled all we can say is that all the way along that saddle wherever you can see alders there's moose in there oh, there is so i think the plan now is go back grab some dinner get a coffee sit down glass a little bit more or maybe get an early night. Try and get a little bit earlier in the morning because they did seem to like it around 9, 10 o'clock. Pick out a bull that we want and get into position. Ideally, we need to drop something either tomorrow or at the very latest, the morning after, to give us enough time to get it packed out. But the weather is being very kind to us and it's set to be that way until we leave the mountain. So at the moment, still feeling pretty relaxed. Well, how can you not be relaxed? It's great to be, just be up here, isn't it, really? I have to say, this is some of the best weather I've had any hunting trip anywhere in the world it's and this is supposed to be the Alaska the last frontier so it's not always going to be this way but we're going to enjoy it while it's here.